Hello Knights fans, back with this week's edition of the FDU Men's Basketball Report here with Coach Greg Herenda. Coach, it's been three games since we last spoke. You had that great win at Princeton, tough games at Lafayette and Providence. Now that you're six games into the season, um, how much more do you know about your team than you did in the early going? Well, I know we're, we're three and three um, and easily, you know, could be, you know, four and two. And I, I think if we played offense in the first half, we could have been five and one and beaten Providence, but we weren't prepared. Um, offensively, our bigs have to catch up to our guards. Our guards didn't even play great, but I give a lot of credit to Providence. Uh, Providence is a, uh, a Big East team and they're, they're picked high in that conference. They have a lot of talented players. But what I've really found out ultimately is that we have a level of toughness. We have a level of togetherness. Uh, our team really responds on the road. The Princeton win, you said it was a great win. It was a historic win in my mind. If you go into Princeton, number one, Brian, no one wants to play Princeton. So to play them is a Herculean move. <laughs> but Bruce came to me, it's like, do we want to play these guys? And you can ask Tom Izzo or Fran McCaffrey or any coach in the NEC, you don't want to play them. But um, we beat them for the second time on their floor. That was historic. It's a program. It's a win for the university. Uh, and then Lafayette is an offensive team that plays a lot like Holy Cross. We just couldn't finish that game. And now we go play Holy Cross, who's very much like Princeton and Lafayette. So the scheduling uh, is difficult. We don't play, we're playing good, smart, well-coached basketball teams early, and it's really only going to help us you know, down the stretch and into the conference and into the conference tournament. Yeah, you touched on the schedule there. It was kind of a quick turnaround. I know you told the guys this is kind of an NBA-type schedule. Right. You played Sunday, and then you had a day off, and then right. you go up and play uh, at Providence. Do you like that kind of uh, routine to get into where you're just playing and the guys are constantly getting around in no, game action? I, I love it. I love our, our team when we won the championship, won 10 road conference wins in the regular season conference combined with the playoffs or the conference tournament. Our team travels well. I think it's good to get out of our environment and, and our defense travels, our toughness travels. So, um, and that's college basketball. We've got to go out and play games. The exposure that we got at, on Fox Sports 1, you know, Andy Katz, uh, you know, did a lot of research, knew about our team, and that got out nationwide. Our recruits, our, our families, our friends, and most of all, our university. You know, we compete with Providence, and, and when you beat, Prop, uh, beat Princeton, you know, you, you're, you're selling the brand. You're selling not only our basketball brand, but the university brand. So it's going on the road is great. It's a great experience to travel. It's a great experience to get out of this region. And obviously Worcester is a very special place to me. That's where I started my Division One coaching career under Coach George Blaney. And we're excited to get back in the, in, uh, on the bus and get Eddie up with our coach bus. And... Uh, head up to Worcester on Friday morning. I gotta love Eddie. One of the trends of your team this season, you're averaging 8.2 made three-pointers per game. That's yes. If that's great stands, it's the second highest in the program's history. Yes. Um, is that surprised you at all, your team's ability to shoot the long ball this season? I think it's a little surprising in that we weren't shooting it leading up to the season. I, we've got guys that can shoot the basketball, and you've got a coach that gives them the confidence to shoot the basketball. So that's a that's a, a good marriage. So not, I'm not really surprised because, um, you know, Darnell's a prolific shooter. Xavier's an excellent shooter. Uh, and Jaleel is a, a good shooter getting better. And then our guys off the bench, you know, like the, the key is like a, a Brandon Powell and a Tyler Jones comes in and makes threes as well. So and then a Mike Holloway will sneak in a few. So. I'm not surprised. I'm happy, but we have to we have to score better around the basket. We've got to get to the foul line more, and obviously we've got to make more free throws. That's that's been a, a little bit of a uh, uh, an issue, but I'm sure we'll be able to correct that. But uh, offensively, you know, we're we're getting there with the bigs, and defensively, you ha you hold, you know, uh, Princeton to, in the 60s on the road, and then you hold Providence to 60s on the road. Those are their own buildings and they're not breaking 70. So our defense has come a long way and we just need to continue to uh, maintain it and build a better home court. We need more fans. We just need more juice. We need more at home and we'll get it once we get back into our conference play. But the road doesn't scare us.
Yeah, you mentioned free throws. I know in the last two years your team has been really great at the free throw line. Right. As a coach, do you let the players kind of figure that out on their own? Is that more of a personal thing? I mean, even Darnell Edge, the, the free throw yeah. champions, missed a couple this year. Or is that something you try to get them to work on and you do talk to them a little no, more no, about? We do certain, certain things in practice. But ultimately, you're on the foul line by yourself. You know, and it's, 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 no one's guarding you, and it's, it's a mentality more than anything, and I'm sure, uh, you know, we'll make our free throws. And speaking of Darnell Edge, he was the NEC Player of the Week. He's gotten off to a great start this season. I know Providence bogged him down a little bit, yeah. but, I mean, he's been efficient. He's been scoring it. He's fourth in the conference in points per game. Uh, we talk a lot about Darnell, but his maturity, and, and how much have you seen him from him as he's your go-to guy now this season? Yeah, he's just, he's, and I, in Providence, he made the 1-3 as the 30-second clock went off, and he had open shots. So he was 0 for 6 in a stretch where we needed him, and it wasn't like Providence was hanging on him, but I give them some credit. But Darnell, I mean, Darnell is the poster child for the American youth, like a kid that just worked hard, just kept on playing all summer, got a scholarship, played behind great players. Now that he has a chance, he's the captain. Uh, He's averaging 17, 18 points a game, but he's a winner academically. He's well over 3-0. He's on the sack. He's a good-looking dude. He's got a great name, Darnell Edge, and and I, I just can't, um, you know, applaud him enough for just his demeanor and what he brings and how he represents our program. He's a great player, and being the, the, the player of the week last week was was awesome. And I'm sure he'll get some more of those accolades as as the year goes along. Yes, definitely. And so you mentioned Holy Cross looking ahead, and some of your previous opponents have kind of geared you up towards them, maybe a similar style. You right. beat them here at the Rothman Center last year. I know it'll be a big win for your team, but uh, how much do you take away from the previous opponents, and does that really help you in uh, in getting ready for this game yeah, Saturday? I think you just get reps in playing against that Princeton-style, high-post, cutting, smart, um, skilled, offensive, and the same thing defensively. They're very – Holy Cross's defense is probably – is better of the three defenses, including in all due respect to Lafayette and Princeton. Uh, but playing the two games gives you the reps and gives you the preparation to go into um, the Holy Cross game because we've done it now, not only in the games, but the two days prior we're preparing. So this is, you know, like our eighth, ninth day of working on similar offensive and defensive tendencies. But I'm just, I'm just excited um, to go back to the heart center, Brian, personally. That place is special. I met Bob Cousy, Tom Heinsohn, Togo Palazzi, and then all the players that I coach. I went to the NCAA tournament for the first time. We went to the NIT. Um, we won big games, and but more than all of that, just the people and and how I grew as a coach and as a man under George Blaney was uh, tremendous. So when that ball goes up, we're going to try to win a game. But prior to that, I just feel like. It's kind of coming full circle, and I think it's real. Uh, it's special, uh, but I want it to be special for our players. And when, when we win a game up there, and it's going to be difficult. And I know they want us. We want them. And last year was a great game here, and we made a great run at the end. But uh, it's going to be a hard-fought game, and um, we're looking forward to it. Great, and hopefully you get a couple minutes there to soak it all in beforehand, yeah, and then tip so goes up. Uh, lastly, you have Noah Vonley, New York Nick, uh, former Indiana Hoosier, yes. ninth overall pick in the NBA draft. Um, the show is going to be great. How did you? Uh, what is your relationship with Noah Vonley, and how did this come about? Noah's mentor was Suleiman Wan, who pl was the center on a, on the UConn team that won a national championship. He was a great player and a great man. Suleiman was my assistant coach at UMass Lowell. Noah is Suleiman's guy. I saw Su I saw Noah play in high school against North Andover High School. He went to Haverhill High School and lose by 40 points to a team that uh, had no one. I think that even played intramural basketball for North Andover. So I saw Noah, he was just a big gangly kid, and he came to our shootout. So I know Noah a little bit, and us. But Suleiman Juan gets all the props for getting him on the show and hopefully he'll be we're taping it later today he might be in the ice tub they had a tough game against the Sixers last night but uh hopefully he he's on on Saturday but the plan is to have Noah he's a beautiful young man he's playing great for the Knicks they just won three out of four so it's a small world basketball and uh bringing a Nick on our airwaves is, is special and we're, we're excited about it that's great. Hopefully Noah can keep it up there for the Knicks, definitely yeah. starting some games for them at the power forward spot. So the Knights will trek up to Worcester, Massachusetts. And well, 
Worcester, Worcester. 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 I don't have that uh, Northeast New England accent yet. They're watching up there. They're going to critique you, man. Oh, oh, I know. They're strict. Worcester, Worcester, Worcester. At least I'm not saying Worcester. I know I've heard that one before. It could be worse. But, yeah, so the Knights will take on Holy Cross at the Hard Center. That'll be a 105 tip-off on Saturday afternoon. So get your breakfast in and tune in. I know it'll be on the Patriot League Network, uh, Nesson Plus. There'll be live stats and all of that. So you can definitely follow along, and you can find all that information at FDUnites.com.